Good morning. I'm Katie Cottingham, and welcome to this news briefing from the 251st National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society in San Diego. We're joined today by Dr. Roberta Pollack from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. She will be talking to us about her work on cellular backpacks that could treat disease while minimizing side effects. Dr. Pollack? Thank you for the kind introduction. So I'll try to summarize my work on the cell backpacks. So imagine when you take a medication, um, the drug or most drug therapy therapies are gonna uh, spread in your whole body, okay? So we are gonna be treating both healthy and diseased cells. Why we don't, we don't want that, right? So imagine a patient with cancer. Uh, Anti-cancer drugs are super toxic and they're gonna be affecting uh, healthy cells in our body and leading to very nasty side effects, okay? So what you want is to minimize the side effects by creating uh, materials that can uh, target the drug delivery in a disease site, okay, in a disease location. So what it, our group um, has developed in a, uh, about a few years ago are the cell backpacks, uh, which are polymer patches of about seven uh, micron wide in diameter, and it's about um, 300 nanometers in thickness, and then we can load drugs inside these polymer patches, and we can use the natural ability of the cells, the immune system cells, which seek the disease in our body, and uh, we can use those cells as drug carriers. So uh, here I bought an example just to illustrate the cell backpacks. So this is a um, macrophage carrying a cell backpack, okay? And in this specific work, what it done is to encapsulate the drug doxorubicin, which is a, a drug that we use for cancer treatment, inside liposomes. Uh, and the liposomes are here represented by those uh, cappuccino truffles. <laughs> so imagine uh, the liposomes are uh, artificial vesicles, so they're little bubbles that can encapsulate a, a wide uh, variety of drugs. So in this case, we loaded the doxorubicin inside and packed them inside the backpack, and then we can use the cell backpack conjugate, and the cell is gonna just travel inside the body and reach the disease site. So that's uh, basically I've done, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Great, um, yeah, so do we have any questions? Please remember to state your name and affiliation when you're asking your question. So it's Kath O'Driscoll and it's from Chemistry and Industry magazine. Just to ask us, there are lots of um, targeted drug delivery strategies out there, so what's particularly special about yours? What makes it work better than some of the other targeted drug delivery strategies out there? Okay, so um, there are many different materials, right, uh, that many different researchers have created for uh, drug delivery systems, and I think I, I, I wouldn't say better, but it's different because so the, the one uh, very common approach that people are using uh, nowadays, nowadays are the cell-based therapies, which is what we are doing too. But uh, the difference is that people are loading particles or, for example, those liposomes, they can be loaded inside the cell or nanoparticles. They can be loaded inside the macrophages because macrophages are just going to uh, engulf all those particles. And they are using the ability of the macrophage to, to reach some the disease site, okay? And then, but uh, the difference for the cell backpacks is the cell backpacks is remain on the outer surface of the cell, okay? So, and the cell doesn't recognize uh, the cell backpack um, and doesn't perform any phagocytosis, right? So the, the backpack is gonna be protecting the medication and it's gonna be laying outside the cell. So imagine when you have um, a particle that is engulfed by the cell, uh, this uh, medication ca can start being degraded inside the cell, okay? So this is basically one of the drawbacks. Have you done any animal studies yet? So um, we've done, so for this specific work with the liposomes, we've done in, vi in vitro works. And we saw that the cells survive um, for relevant time scales, like for about 24 hours or uh, even a little bit more, uh, carrying a very nasty drug on their backs, which is very exciting. And now what you're doing is to load enzymes and um, doing, um, in vivo work, and we have very exciting results. So um, a work published last year by our group and 
and Professor Mitra Grochi from uh, Santa Barbara, uh, they found out that the cell backpacks can travel um, inside the mice uh, with inflammation and it can accumulate two times more in, in inflamed tissue. So we saw that the, the cell backpacks can um, cross endothelial cell layer, which is very exciting. So they can kind of squeeze in the cell, the cell layers, the endothelial cell layers, and carry the backpacks with them. Yeah. And I read in the press release it said something about the blood brain barrier as well. Yes. Which would be a very big deal, I suppose. Yes, this is a very big barrier. deal, and that's um, what we're doing now. So, what are you actually? What do you need to do in order to establish that it will cross the blood brain barrier? I mean, why why are you optimistic that it even might? Well, um, because the macrophages, they are, when you have a, um, a disease, for example, Parkinson or any other brain disease, we have inflammation in the brain and um, the macrophages are recruited and they cross the blood brain barrier to try to fight this, uh, the, the inflammation process, right? Uh, and so we're, what you're doing now, uh, we are preparing backpacks that have this enzyme called catalase and the, and the catalase is just, uh, antioxidant enzyme, and uh, we are packing them inside the backpacks, and we are testing in vivo, and we have very exciting results. Uh, have you published the results yet when you're testing in these in vivo tests with catalase? If I have published. Have you published the catalase no. Um, results? No, not yet. It's not published yet, so we are on, it's ongoing work. Yeah. Uh, we're still working on it, so I, I cannot like talk too much about it, but... Okay. Um, we have very, very interesting, very exciting results. And yeah, maybe soon in the next ACS. <laughs> okay, Doug has a question. Uh, Doug Dollamore, ACS Office of Public Affairs. Um, in the press release, I noticed that there was a, a mention of a problem um, getting these backpacks um, to, uh, to work properly, or, or the, the cancer drug was released prematurely. Yeah. And I was hoping you might elaborate on how that was overcome. Yeah. So, um, so th this anti-cancer drug, as many other uh, drugs, anti antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, they are small molecule drugs. Okay. So they are very small molecules, and the way we we uh, fabricate the backpack is by uh, layer by layer assembly. It's a poly um, electrolyte multi-layer system. Okay. And we can assemble the films very well and incorporate the Kelly, the, the doxorubicin inside the, the film. But we noticed that the doxorubicin, because it's a small molecule, was diffusing out of the films, the backpacks, very fast. And we don't want that. We want the drug to be entrapped inside the backpacks. And once we reach the disease side, we can apply, for example, an external stimulant, for example, to that can be heat, ultrasound, magnetic field, whatever you want. And then we can um, trigger the release of this drug. So what we've done is that we encapsulated the docs inside the liposome. So I saw that the, um, the docs remain inside the liposomes. And the drug still diffuses out, but it takes a much longer time. And also using the liposomes, I could encapsulate uh, or embed much more, up to nine times more doxorubicin inside the, the backpacks. So it, it's a nice way, um, and it's a very versatile way to encapsulate all the t all t other types of drugs as well, because the, the liposomes and many other nanoparticles, they, can, um, they have this ability of encapsulate um, many different types of um, cargos, and it, they can be hydrophilic, hydrophobic, and so on. Okay. Um, one quick question about the backstory. Where, where did the idea for this, the cellular backpacks come from, and, and, uh, and uh, how did you um, develop it? So I actually, I didn't develop it. It was an idea uh, from, this idea was Professor Rubiner's idea, which Professor Rubiner is my supervisor now. And um, I actually, I'm not really sure how he came up with this idea, but I think it's a very clever idea and uh, to functionalize the cells. And the, the interesting thing about the cell backpacks is that they don't, as I mentioned before, they don't get uh, internalized by the cell. So it can, uh, this, the 
the load or the, the therapeutics can lay down on the outer sur surface of the cell. And this is because of their, their um, composition and the shape of the backpack. So imagine if you have round particles that are on the same size. So for example, if you have round particles that are seven micromite in diameter, uh, those particles are gonna be engulfed by the, the uh, the macrophage, but not the backpack. So this is a very big advantage. But yeah, I, I don't really know how he came up with this idea. Okay, we have a question in the back. Hi, Christine Sa, Office of Public Affairs. Um, so you mentioned that there needs to be an external stimulus to release the, um, the drug from the backpacks. And I was wondering, how do you know, do you have to wait a certain time before you apply the external stimulus? Or is there an imaging portion of this um, technology so that you know when to apply the, the stimulus? Yeah, so those liposomes that I used in this work, they are echogenic. So this means that they have an air pocket inside the vesicle. And uh, people are using that for eye imaging purposes. So the idea was to use uh, something that I could both track once the uh, cell containing the, uh, the backpacks, right, they're inside, traveling inside our body, we can apply ultrasound pulses and see and localize where the, the if we have like desired amount of back, this is like ideally talking, okay. Um, and then once we, we see that we have a nice amount of backpacks containing those the, uh, in the disease location, right, we can apply different ultrasound pulses and then we have, can have bolus release of the drug. So this was the, the idea. We didn't reach to that point, but I think it's a nice um, idea and we, ha we can use other types of nanoparticles too and you can apply heat, we can apply ultrasound, we can apply um, magnetic field, for example. There are many uh, other nanoparticles that have been developed that we can pack inside the backpack, so. Okay, Kath, did you have another question? Just very quickly, yeah. Just to ask about, again, the, the backpack idea, you, you sort of referred to this idea that because it's in a backpack, it's protected, so I guess that has implications for the dose of compound. That means you can use a lot less. I mean, what are the sort of doses of doxorubicin that you can you, you load into the backpacks for therapeutic effect? It's in the order of my, mm, picograms or something, and we still see effects on, like, because of the proximity effect, we still see effects on the cells after so all. Presumably that's a lot less than it's you would It's like, get yeah, ma much less than what is used now. I don't know, like, how many times now, but I don't remember, but... It's like compared to, so when you, when you uh, uh, in, uh, have an intravenous injection, for example, in the case of the doxorubicin, so you, you need a lot of more than you actually need. You need to uh, inject much more than you actually need because the drug is gonna spread in your entire body, okay? So using uh, this kind of technology, um, you're targeting to a very s specific area, so we, you need to use much less. And also, if you have like bolus release you, uh, or trigger release in, in situ, uh, you can use much less drug then. Have you tried any other drugs in the pack packs as well? Um, so yeah, the, so I've tried the, the doxorubicin, and now we are working with the catalase, which is the enzyme. Uh, but before, we are having like um, a little bit trouble of incorporating different um, like small molecule drugs. And I, I think, uh, our group has published another work where we encapsulated um, B BSA, which is like just a uh, model protein. Okay, thank you. Okay, other questions? If not, then thank you very much for joining us today. The archived version of the session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS Live San Diego. Please join us for our next press conference today at 11 o'clock on generating electricity with tomato waste. Thank you.